we're standing here on a beautiful morning. We're about a week out from our Canadian University Collegiate Championships, and we're talking with Dean, our superintendent. He's going to tell us a bit about how we're setting up the course for the championships next week. When was the first major championship held here at Cordova Bay? I think it was around uh, 15 years ago. It would have been one of the back when the Canadian Tour event was called the Payless. And we hosted two of those uh, in about a five-year span. And then it's been at Uplands uh, since then. What do you think has changed the most about the course since those first events? Well, we've added a few bunkers, a few tees. Um, but for the most part, I think just the trees have grown in and uh, conditions are far better than they were 15 years ago. Uh, just the technology and the science behind the equipment that we use and uh, some of the products, uh, we've been able to push the turf to much better playing conditions. Tell me a bit about what your crew has done sort of in the last couple of weeks and in, in the week up to the championship itself in terms of getting the course ready. Well, I would say we haven't done in too much different than we would normally do uh, leading up to this event. It's spring now, uh, May, so we're always uh, getting the bunkers uh, ready for a season of play, uh, getting the fairways, the greens uh, where we want them. Uh, for instance, our target uh, green speeds uh, for public daily play is between 9 feet and 9 feet 6. And for the tournament, we want them to be 10-6 to 11. So that's really one of the only things that would be different. Uh, as far as the rough goes, uh, we've just fertilized last week. Uh, we would normally have a spring application anyway. It's the one time of year that we do fertilize the rough is in May. And uh, so we're going to raise, for the week of the event, we're going to raise the rough up to uh, two and a half inches, but still cut it every day. So it'll be a little longer than our day-to-day -day play. Uh, challenge the golfers a little bit more, but it'll be consistent. As far as the playability, we're really just trying to make the course firm so the ball will roll out and uh, quick and firm on the greens so it challenges. It, it requires a really high level of shot to going into tight pins. So our point is just to make it uniform and consistent. And we want to see good scores. I want to see these kids shoot really well. It's exciting to see good players uh, play here. What are you guys going to do during the course of the week? Uh, we run a split shift. Um, half the crew will work just a normal eight hour day. Uh, they'll be here in the morning to help us prepare for the players. And then they'll move up to the ridge or up to the market to uh, do some garden work or some other things that we haven't had time to do leading up to the tournament. Uh, the other half of our crew will work four hours in the morning, uh, cutting and rolling, uh, raking bunkers and whatnot. And then they'll come back in the evening for three or four hours. And that's where we'll cut our fairways, cut our tees, our surrounds. Uh, and the rough in preparation for the for the next day. Does the obvious pride that they take every day in their place sort of go up a notch as they prepare to showcase their work? It does. Um, you know, you you mentioned obvious pride, and that's uh, that's something that uh, drives me every day. And I know um, we get tremendous support from the ownership uh, to make the course as good as it can be, and uh, which instills a lot of pride in people. Uh, the weeks leading up to the tournament, I should say maybe even the months leading up to the tournament, it's always fun to have a specific day when you try to make the golf course peak. So have the bunkers perfect as far as playability, greens firm and fast, uh, fairways with good roll and yet consistent. So it's just kind of fun to have a target date. I think the big difference here will be in the greens because uh, these kids, I mean most of them are hitting the ball 270 to 320. So they're gonna, you can't make the course long enough for the young player today. Uh, but uh, the one thing that's going to separate the winners from the losers is going to be whoever's really hot with a putter that week, undoubtedly. Tell me about what holes you think will be most difficult because of the special conditions you guys are putting up. Well, I think the two, I don't know if it's so much conditions. I firmly believe 11, you mentioned that, and Jim's right on there. That's a very tough par three. But I think holes five and holes 14, those are the ones where um, you can have a birdie, um, in the case of 14, even an eagle, because they can reach that par five and two, but they can also have an eight or a 10. Uh, so I think those are the two, and I've seen it in the other major events that we've had. Those two holes tend to either put people right into contention or, or knock them out of contention. There was a period of time, let's say a decade or so, maybe even longer, where architects and owners of new golf courses were trying to build these real difficult tests of golf. And uh, what they were doing is they were building golf courses for less than 1% of the population that could handle 
uh, that difficult of a test to golf. Um, I think the, uh, the game has realized that it needs to be enjoyable, and to be enjoyable it needs to be fair. This golf course is going to test them. We don't need to trick it up uh, with super long rough or anything like that. They'll find their own trouble. That's what I'm looking for right there, Steve.